Maps are a vital part of any D&D campaign. They set the stage for the world, inform players in where they are, and tell them who they'll see. As a visual representation of the setting, they are a vital world-building tool. But should the players have access to these maps? When I took a poll to see what other DMs thought, I found that just about 80% of you provide your players with detailed maps. But I'm here to tell you that while maps are an incredible world-building tool, they might just be detrimental to a player's exploration and discovery of a whole new world. When I start up a new video game, one of the first things I do when I get out of the tutorial section is open up the world map to see what's in store for me. I'm presented with a bounded map, which shows me the extents of the world I'll be playing in. Immediately I know the edges of the earth, so to say. I know where I can go and what might be in store for me there. Even worse, much of the world has precise points of interest, which I can beeline towards. I can pass by market stalls, billboards, and people knowing for certain that there's nothing of interest between me and my objective. Even if there are no waypoints, a detailed enough map will still betray an important location. When I was first playing through Assassin's Creed Origins, I saw a deep scar in the desert to the far south. Obviously something important was there, and when I eventually made my way to the desert, I was presented with an awe-inspiring vista of endless sands. But I knew they weren't endless, and I knew the exact location of a lost ruin in the desert. So instead of placing a waypoint, I closed the map and just dove in. I knew something was here, but I allowed myself to forget its precise location. As I descended into the scorching dunes, my eyes were on my surroundings rather than on a waypoint or my map. My eyes became drawn to lone figures standing out here alone, seemingly pointing me towards something. If I got close to the figure, they would dissolve into dust. But they kept appearing, no matter where I went, pointing me in a single direction. Once I decided to follow the vision's directions, I found myself beholding a structure buried deep within the dunes. Whoa. Without a map, I would have never known to go into the desert at all. If I had heard rumors among townsfolk of a scar in the southern sands, it would have been a wild adventure just to find this mythical place. I tell this story because I recently bought Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. One of the realms of dread is Harakir, the domain of ancient dead. A land of ancient tombs, forgotten gods, cursed treasures, and desert perils. I have always been enthralled by deserts and lost civilizations, so naturally this realm was most interesting to me. While the realm is marked by ever-shifting sands, we are still presented with a map which has a player's version. Imagine being flung into this realm, and upon finding a village, you're given this map. While it has no waypoints, it still clearly shows points of interest, like the waterways of the realm vital for life, or the vortexes of sand making dangerous areas in the dunes. What surprise is in store for the players if they already know there's water to be found somewhere, or a vortex of sands to be avoided? Instead of hearing this information through roleplay, they just have it right in front of them. There's no need to ask the townsfolk for directions when they'll just point to a spot on the map. Instead of navigating by the villagers' mention of various points of interest, the players instead just beeline across the desert using simple cardinal directions thanks to the map. In contrast, having the players navigate by scouting with familiars, picking up barely visible trails, and basically just letting the world guide their path is so much more interesting than just referring to a map all the time. Not to mention that maps also reduce the mystery of the world substantially. I have certainly made the same mistake in my maps. This map I made about two years ago for my long-running Cobalt campaign clearly shows points of interest on a continental scale, such as Evershade, Shatterthrone, and the Isle of the Dead. I feel like entering these places, or at least hearing about them through roleplay, would have had a much greater impact on the player's experience if they didn't already know they were there from the get-go. What I'm trying to say is, even if we present our players with blank maps, they can still see likely locations of importance, and worse, they also see the extents of the world you've built. To slowly learn the lay of the land, to ask the people of the village about their surroundings, of their myths, their legends, that is a real exploration experience. This all isn't to say that maps can never exist in your setting. Obviously someone would have created a mapping of the country or world as they know it, we see all throughout our own history that maps have dated back thousands of years, but the maps of these times were often incomprehensible compared to today's maps. Even during the age of exploration, maps were not all that precise. Explorers navigated by the stars using astrolabes, sextants, mathematics, and the general knowledge of what direction they needed to go and what landmarks they should be seeing along the way. 
But even for those back home, maps weren't really used to navigate, more to document the known world. These maps would be incredibly rare before the invention of the printing press, only seen in castles of the nobility and the homes of the wealthy. Since adventurers often come in contact with kings and wealthy persons, they're sure to see these maps. I might recommend only giving players a glimpse of these maps when they are seeing them in roleplay, and afterwards they'll have to go off of their memory or whatever notes they've taken. If the players ever want to acquire a map, they'd be hard pressed to find anyone willing to sell theirs. Of course, this all comes with one caveat, magic. In a magical setting, maps may be more accurate, but there could still be limitations on availability. Perhaps the difficulties in getting a map are just too much for a lower level party, who instead are forced to navigate by asking people and using their own intuition. Or with the example of Harakir, nobody in that realm of dread has even made a map or survived attempts at accurately drawing out the entire realm. Overall, there are plenty of reasons that there wouldn't be any maps the players can obtain. At the end of the day, this all depends on the type of game you want to run. For me, exploring the unknowns of a fresh world created in the mind of the DM is the most exciting part of the game, and if I'm presented with a detailed map, it leaves less to wonder about. Or it does make me wonder about what's not on the map at its edges. Taking the example of Game of Thrones, what could possibly be further beyond the edge of Essos, or further in the depths of Seleros? I'm more interested in what possibilities lie in the unknown regions versus the known. If there is no map, the whole world is unknown to the players, and anything they can imagine is possible. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my first foray into non-Foundry content. I am still making Foundry content for the weekend, so stay tuned for those. Let me know what you think in the comments below, whether you like it, whether it's too short or too long, or whether you agree or not. I'm hoping to keep up the pace and really grow my channel, and if you're new here, consider subscribing. Huge shout out to my shout tier patrons Darkside, Shane, Modnar, Matthew Russell, Yuri Yeti, Demetrius, Meopenheimer, Nexus, and Smoothie Buns. I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching!